basically there was a recent conference called hot chips 34 it's a high performance computer chip conference whatever super mega nerds go there but tesla finally provided their first real look into the hardware and software architecture of the project dojo system um for those that don't know that's the tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of investment that tesla made into how they can accelerate their machine learning their ai stuff for their self-driving and all the other types of cool bells and whistles that they're working on um and they released a bunch of specs and stats and you can get into the the tel you know the teraflops and all the other kind of you know <laughs> 300 things i'm teraflops. not gonna i won't dive too much into that because <laughs> you know outside unless you're like a super nerd like me you probably don't care um but what i i do want to just kind of cover a, a little bit on the high level of the like the innovation that tesla has made with the new chips what's really impressive um is that they're really kind of doing a combination of focusing on scalability, on flexibility, and on efficiency of how they do machine learning. Um, and, you know, I'll quickly, very quickly, basics about the machine learning and the models. You probably all hear about models. When you have a model, it's a little bit different than like how you think about things as like a person. So like when you're a person and say you're like playing baseball or you're driving or doing whatever, when you do that thing, you're also learning from it, right? Like when you're playing baseball or playing a sport, you're also getting better at that sport as you're playing, like you're developing the skill while you're doing that. That's not how the vast majority of machine learning works. Normally in a computer with an AI, you either are in training mode or you're in inference mode. And training mode is where I'm taking lots of data and I'm teaching the model. And then inference mode is when I have a trained model already and I'm using it to make predictions and figure some stuff out. So in your car, your models, your AI, your self-driving, that's not in training mode, that's an inference mode. And the training actually happens back in the Tesla offices and the data centers um, where they're, you know, they have all their data scientists doing a bunch of work. Um, and so this architecture, this thing they mostly showed us is mostly around the training. It's how can they, you know, train the models? How can they take all this massive data they're getting from their fleet of cars and learn from it and teach their AI models how to drive the car, you know, safely. It was just really impressive to see what they've done. You know, they they have this whole architecture around, um, they have a custom instruction set. Again, not that important, but just they're, they, they didn't want to uh, tie themselves to any existing technologies out there. They wanted to focus on how could I take one chip and how could I take a hundred chips and how could I take a thousand chips and make them all work together into like this supercomputer type environment so they can scale it out, which is, you know, really, really useful. And especially as they develop more advanced technologies, the other cool thing is, you know, their flexibility. So their chip can actually work on different types of floating point math. They can do different precision. So what I mean is like, you know, when you're in school and you first learn about like pi, everyone hopefully knows pi 3.14 or whatever, 3.14 that works for some things, but that's not really that accurate for a lot of more advanced things. So like some of us might, you know, for example, like I usually would use like 3.14159, for example, I need more digits to be more useful. Um, well, what's interesting about machine learning and AI is that you don't actually need that many digits. You don't actually need that much precision in a lot of calculations. So when you hear about your computers and you know, all your precision and you know, you got your 64 bits and your 32 bits back in the day on Atari's, right? We had eight bits. Um, that's how many, how much precision you can have. Tesla's chip has the ability to dynamically scale. So it's more efficient in the power and what they need of, you know, all the precision. So anyway, architecture is awesome. Um, it's going to allow their machine learning guys to run lots of experiments. And that is huge um, quickly to get feedback. When I train a model, you know, my own data scientist I work with today at my company, if they try to train a model on their laptop. It might laptop. It might take several weeks. You train it on this, you know, in the cloud, it might take, you know, a few hours on these, you know, servers with this dojo architecture like they'll be able to do thousands of models and get in seconds have feedback and on their experiments their machine learning guys will be able to iterate quickly tesla has spared no expense they brought in a ton of brilliant engineers some of the greatest minds in semiconductor they stole a bunch of people out of amd they got some folks from apple you know they you know you know former intel guys they got all these folks together and they designed a new chip architecture from the ground up and then and now they're finally getting be delivered. Uh, it's being manufactured by TSMC, which uh, seven nanometers. So again, not the latest and greatest absolute technology, but very close to it. Pretty bleeding edge. Um, TSMC actually does three and four nanometer now, but the cost, it doesn't make sense. So Tesla made the right choice. <laughs> the seven nanometer. 
Um, and anyway, again, the, there's no individual. This, this is the interesting thing, I think, for me. There was no individual innovation or thing that was like innovative. What was innovative is all the things they brought together. So like the 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 math precision stuff, like Google did that with their TPU chips, you know, six years ago, seven years ago. It, that was probably the first time I ever saw that. But like just combining that with some of the scaling, you know, the hyper, you know, um, scaled architecture and the interconnects and the data transfer, that that's what's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, so Dojo though is about is about the training, right? Is there some Correct. of that primarily the training yes. that will end up being, you know, in the real time inference of the driving? It, it could though, it could do the inference as well. Um, but yes, it's obviously it's custom tailored to the training for sure is where it's really focused. But I mean, inference is kind of like training, but at a much simpler scale, much smaller scale. So you don't need as much horsepower to do inference, but you mm -hmm. can still benefit from the same types of calculations in some ways. What is Tesla saying in terms of uh, the percentage of real world versus, I mean, they, so, in theory, they have a ton of real world, right? Because I think Tesla mostly works with real world. What, what is interesting is like other companies like Waymo, you know, out of Google is mostly uses simulation. I think that approach is much faster and easier to get to doing robo taxis in geo fenced areas like, oh, yeah, we could do robo taxis in this city or in this area. I think Tesla's approach is fundamentally different and is going to get you into a general like wider spread, just like it works in more, you know, situations and more broader areas, probably better. But I mean, who's going to win in the end? I mean, who knows? We, you know, nobody's actually level five yet. So um, I, I couldn't say which way we'll get there. But so again, I would have done more simulation, but I, I do feel like Tesla, they have the data, right? If you have the real world data, use it. Um, and I think that they, they definitely play more with real world. That doesn't mean they couldn't use Dojo to run against simulated data. Um, it's just, they would have to, uh, what I will say is Dojo, even though it is like a supercomputer, it has all these powerful things, and it was at the high performance computing, it doesn't actually have some of the design decisions that enable it to do good simulation. So like you wouldn't want to use Dojo to play Crisis. <laughs> you wouldn't want to use Dojo to like render, you know, stuff for like aerospace and stuff like that. It's actually well, not going to be what it's good at. Um, what's that? Well, it's it's an it's an ASIC, right? I mean, it's it's got a a particular job is supposed to do. Right? It's it's really good at the job that Tesla set in forward for it. So what, what are, where I'm most excited is I'm curious to see Dojo version two and Dojo, Dojo ver, version three. Because again, Google, same thing. They had the Tensor you know, chip. That The TPUs were really cool. Version one was cool and innovative, but then version two is where it started to get really sexy and version three where they get to refine it. And I, I'm sure that uh, you know uh, Tesla is going to continue so, to do that. So. You, you, you know, Lewis, I think you just answered the question for me. Okay. <laughs> And, and 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 the question the the question was, how does Tesla justify raising the price of FSD again this year? 